Hello students, welcome to Legacy IS Academy. Today we are going to discuss about a recent eruption, a volcanic eruption that we have witnessed in the Mount Etna, which is a very very active volcano situated along the Italian coastline of the Mediterranean Sea. So we are going to discuss in this video in detail how and why volcano erupts, what basically is a volcano, different different types of volcano and where volcanoes are basically found across the world and why they are found in that particular region only. So, first of all, to give you the brief context of the topic which we are going to discuss today. So, recently the Mount Etna situated in the Italy has erupted which is <coughs> believed to be or considered to be one of the world's most active volcano. Though this was causing public concern for a very long period of time and it was predicted that the volcano will erupt in 2024 but it has erupted almost a year before. Now, Generally, volcanic eruptions are a phenomena that happens at a repeated interval, regular interval all across the world, but only some of the volcanic eruptions are able to make in the news headlines whenever the big ones erupt. For example, Etna obviously is a very big volcano. Apart from that, the Mount Kilauea that has erupted recently situated in the Hawaiian islands <coughs> of the central Pacific, Mauna Loa similarly situated in the same region. Then we have Mount Merapi which erupted a year before situated in Philippines. Then we have Haye Fala Hokul or Fagradals Fal volcano, both of which are situated in the Iceland. And Iceland is a region which continuously suffered from the volcanic eruption and the resultant earthquake. However, during the year, if we talk about apart from these major volcanic eruptions, there may be as many as 50 to 80 fresh eruptions around the world. Now, if we try to understand the location of Mount Etna, we can see this is the Italy. Italy is a kind of peninsula that is extending outside, extending outward toward the Mediterranean Sea and somewhere in the southern region of Italy, we have Mount Etna. Nearby some other volcanoes are also situated there such as Panaria, Stromboli, both of which are active volcano. On the other hand, slightly to the central part of Italy, you can see two major volcanoes that is Campi Fiagri and Vesuvius. Now, Vesuvius is considered as a dormant volcano. So, somewhere in between the Ionian Sea and Tyrrhenian Sea, <coughs> both of which are part of uh, uh, both of which are part of Mediterranean Sea, that is where the Mount Etna is situated. The reason why volcanoes exist here along this line that you are seeing here along the coastline of Italy is because what is happening if you try to understand the world map and try to imagine the world map. To the south of Italy, you have the African continent, and Italy itself is a part of wider Eurasian continent. So, African continent is continuously converging toward the Asian continent. Due to this, it applies pressure or force toward the Mediterranean sea plate. And due to this, what happens? Mediterranean sea plate has been fragmented into several smaller plates. And whenever this Mediterranean smaller sea plate subducts below the Eurasian continental plate, what happens? The plate start to get a plate start to melt as it goes down inside the mantle, and the discharge of magma and eruption of magma happens. That is why we have. Mediterranean Sea is considered as one of the major volcanic zones across the world. Now, if you talk about Mount Etna itself, it is considered as the most active volcano in the entire Europe and one of the largest volcanoes of the world. First of all, in the history, the first volcanic eruption has been recorded somewhere about 1500 BC from the Mount Etna. And since then, that means almost we can say 3500 years, it has erupted for more, at least more than 200 times. The current eruption at Etna have led to the flight cancellations at nearby Catania airport of Italy. Also, the use of cars and motorbikes has been banned for 48 hours due to the high amount of ash that is basically emitted during the volcanic eruption. Now, many times when we talk about volcanic eruption, it might seem to us falsely that only the magma or lava comes out, but it is not the case. 60 to 70 percent of the erupted materials are made up of gases and water vapor, 15 to 20 percent are lava and rest are what we can call as a solid fragment of rock which are referred as pyroclastic materials. So, as that is generally released, the fine dust particles that is generally released during the volcanic eruption, if they deposit around the nearby area, they can be very, very slippery, slippery in nature and thus increases the cases of accidents and thus the ban on the cars and motorbikes. So, first of all, if you try to explain in a simplest term that what do we mean by the term volcano or what do we understand by term volcano? So, the best definition we can quote that has been given by the USGS that is United States Geological Service and it simply explains that volcanoes are the openings 
or winds where lava tephra that is small rocks we have discussed and steam erupts onto the earth's surface volcanoes are something that can be found on the land as well as in the ocean they are in part a result of their own eruption but also the general formation of our planets as tectonic plates move in briefly the entire planet earth can be divided into seven major tectonic plates most of which are written here in this particular diagram so but what happens none of the plates are stationary all these plates are moving with respect to each other and whenever two plates interact with each other the heavier plate subducts below the uh, lighter one and the subduction of heavier plate causes melting of the rocks of the heavier plate this molten materials is what makes up the magma and due to the pressure of the gases and due to the high temperature that it has it rises in the upward direction break through the crust of the earth and comes out in the form of volcanic eruption the magma which it rises and reaches above the earth surface is referred as lava and when the lava start to accumulate around the vent gradually it leads into development of volcanic landforms which can be mountains islands as well as plateaus now volcanoes can be classified into several categories the first method of classification is what we can see on the basis of the activity of volcano that means how frequently the volcanoes are erupting so on that basis we can classify the volcanoes into three categories active volcanoes a volcano which has erupted in a very recent period of time then we have the dormant volcano such volcanoes which has erupted in the last 2000 years but not recently uh, but uh, not recently is dormant or now recently it is dormant or asleep an extinct volcano is such volcano which is unlikely to erupt ever again and is dead or extinct in case of india we have only one active volcano that is barren island which is situated in the andaman and nicobar island dormant volcanoes examples as we have discussed can be mount vesuvius in italy can be mount kilimanjaro that is the highest peak in africa and dormant extinct volcanoes are such kind of volcanoes which can never erupt so mount demavandi in iran is one example of extinct volcano the other method of classification of volcano is on the basis of what kind of lava is coming out during the volcanic eruption now on that basis the first type of volcano we can characterize is the shield volcano shield volcanoes are such kind of volcanoes which have large and broad slopes as you can see from this particular picture and they generally develop when the lava is heavily fluid highly fluid in nature that means highly mobile in nature the reason why lava can be highly mobile is because of lesser amount of silica that is present inside the lava as the silicon um, silica amount is less the intramolecular bond in the lava is very very less and they can flow almost like a water so in the hawaiian region the volcanoes are of shield volcano type as the lava can spread over a large flat surface and thus you do not have development of conical structure so as you discuss mauna loa in hawaii as you can see from the actual image itself is a best example of shield volcano second type of volcano is what we can refer as composite volcano composite volcano are such kind of volcano which are steeply sloping symmetrical and also have explosive eruptions this kind of volcano forms if the lava is having slightly higher viscosity and lesser mobility the example is mayon volcano of philippines the third kind of volcano is what is referred as lava domes lava domes refers to such kind of volcano which are smaller in height slopes are much more steeper but the lava that comes out is very very viscous in nature and it comes and does not come in a violent explosive fashion it just oozes out generally due to the divergence between the plates for example soa shinjan in japan is such an example of lava domes and last is what we can refer as cinder cone which is the smallest single vent volcano where you have the eruption of cinders ash and rocks and sunset crater in arizona is one such example of the cinder so that is the method of classification of volcano on the basis of the types or nature of lava now why do volcanoes erupt so the general science is that essentially whenever we have the development or formation of magma below the earth's crust it can be due to the subduction of the denser crust which can be oceanic crust below the lighter oceanic crust or below the lighter continental crust so whenever magma develops magma is basically a molten rock below the surface of earth gradually due to the presence of the gases it is start to bubble in the upward direction and thus rises overflows like boiling milk out of the pot on a stove and thus comes out on the surface of the earth the magma find its way to the vents in the volcano and gets spewed across the land and into the atmosphere where magma erupts from a volcano it is called as lava now overall if you talk about the entire world 
there are many volcanic zones the one we have discussed in the beginning is the mediterranean volcanic belt apart from that the largest volcanic zone on the earth is what we refer as the circum pacific ring as this is the region that is surrounding the pacific ocean from all the sides and since the volcanoes are situated along this entire ring this is also referred as a ring of fire almost 90% of global volcanoes are situated here and 90% of active volcanoes of the world of the 1500 total vol active volcanoes that we have around the world are situated in the circum pacific zone as you can see from this particular map the zone extends all the way from south america extends all the way to the western coast of north america then moving across the aleutian island chain between the siberia and alaska it then further moves eastward and then traverses the entire Kamchatka Peninsula of Russia, then further goes to Japan, Philippines, Indonesia, and then terminates somewhere to the south of New Zealand. The reason why we have development of such volcanoes in this region is because Pacific Plate is a massive oceanic plate and it is surrounded by lighter continental plate from all the side. Thus, when the Pacific Plate subducts below any of these lighter plates, it causes generation and development of magma due to the melting of the plate, which rises, creating the volcanic eruption. So that is why when you have the uh, Pacific plate, when it is subducting below the lighter South American continental plate, we have development of volcanic eruption. Since it has been going on for a very, very long period of time, due to the volcanic eruption, we have development of volcanic landform, which in this case is Andes Mountain. Similarly, in the North America, we have formation of several mountain ranges, which is also example of volcanic mountain such as Andes mountain, we have rock, uh, sorry, we have in North America, Rocky mountain, we have Cascade ranges, we have Sierra Nevada ranges. Similarly, we have formation of islands of Japan due to such kind of eruption. We have formation of volcanic islands because whenever two oceanic plates are subducting, there is nothing else but the water. So whenever the denser Pacific plate subducts below the lighter Philippines plate or when the, whenever the denser Indo-Australian plate subducts below the lighter Philippines plate or Pacific plate, you have formation of a chain of island which are referred as archipelago. So Indonesia, Philippines are an example of archipelago where the volcanic eruption has led to development of volcanic island arc due to the OO convergence and the same extends all the way up to the south of New Zealand. So that is the largest belt of volcanic eruption. Now, now the question comes that is it possible for us to predict the volcano? For us means for the scientists to predict the volcano. So answer is that scientists are actually capable of predicting volcanic eruption hours or sometimes several days in advance. This is something very very different from earthquake because earthquake is something that cannot be predicted. However, scientists by using the seismographic data from the earthquakes and other tremors because those can be precursor to volcanic eruption can identify whether there is a chance of volcanic eruptions to occur or not. They monitor the ground for signs of deformation as well which may be caused by the movement of magma and the best example of this we can see in the recent example of Iceland because few days back a large crack has started to develop in the Iceland and the reason is believed to be because of the volcanic eruption that might occur in the coming day. So in this picture you can see the large cracks where the rock roads has completely broken in the small town of Iceland. And they also take readings of the volcanic gas emissions and changes in gravity and magnetic field. And on that basis, it is much more easier to predict volcanic eruption as compared to the other geophysical phenomena such as earthquake. So that is all about this particular video. I hope you understood about the eruption of Mount Etna, how it happens, why it happens, and overall a brief idea about the volcanic eruption. That is all for this video. Thank you very much.